morning. I am wondering about the typical things that you do around your house before guests arrive. I just need to catch up. Technological challenges. Same thing, boys. Can somebody work my slides for me? Here, we'll try this. This seems to work for Father James. He wanders around here for a little while, and then eventually he manages to pick it up. It's always the way, you know, technology being what it is. This was fine like 15 minutes ago. No, it just keeps going and going and going. Any ideas in there? Okay, there we go. So you guys are gonna, I, I still can't get it by the way, so you guys will have to run my slides for me. I'll, I'll watch my screen as best I can. Um, so typical things that you do before guests arrive. Okay, would you put things through a sniff test perhaps, if you were at home? Would you give the bathroom maybe a once over, make sure it's good and clean for your guests? Uh, put laundry away and hide different things and maybe vacuum? W would you be willing to admit that maybe you hid dirty dishes in the, in the oven? I do have a, there we go. You willing to admit, anyone willing to admit that they've actually ever hid? Oh, there we go, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gene. <laughs> we have one honest person here. <laughs> One of the things we always need to do at our house is pay attention particularly to the front entry of our house. Because in our front entry we have, uh, it's, a, it's a plastic thing that we put our shoes on. Now I'm not proud of this, I'm rather embarrassed about it, so I, I, I'm sharing this with you. Um, we have an embarrassing amount of shoes in our front entry hall. I actually, in preparing this homily, went out and I counted nine pairs of shoes that belong to a particular person. And it's not my wife, Patty. It's actually our son, Patrick. Patrick doesn't live with us. <laughs> he lives in the valley with three other guys and they share a house, he goes to Acadia. So I'm telling him, okay, I said, Patrick, be prepared. Uh, he's coming to the seven o'clock mass tonight. And uh, I said, be prepared. I'm actually speaking a little bit about you and your shoes. And, and uh, do you know that morning he went to Value Village and bought two more pairs of shoes? <laughs> so if anything for Patrick, he's a thrifty shopper because he tends to buy most of his shoes at places like Value Village. He doesn't believe in paying full retail at all. So I will give him that much. So whether you spend time vacuuming or cleaning the bathroom or, or hiding dirty dishes, we all tend to have a certain routine when it comes to welcoming people into our house and welcome people, people into our homes. And then when, when your guests finally arrive, what type of host or hostess are you? Do you tend to, to move around a lot and continually up and down, can't sit down? Do you need anything? Do you want a cup of coffee? Do you want to need a cup of tea, a glass of water? Do you need anything to eat? Or do you tend to sit and just be present to the person who is in front of you, who has come to visit with you. We see in our gospel today both sides, both and. We see Jesus who comes to visit with Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. And when Jesus comes in, Mary sits at his feet and listens to Jesus. She listens to God. She listens to the word of the Lord. Meanwhile, Martha, as it says, is, is distracted by her worries. And it says because she's distracted because she has many tasks. And after a while, Martha comes to the Lord and, and she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister Mary has left me with all the work and he says, tell her then to help me. Tell her then to help me. 
See, Martha is busy serving the Lord, serving the disciples, and that is not a bad thing. We need to know that. Serving is not a bad thing. But when we're distracted, when we're exhausted, when we're confused, when we're spending so much time in our busyness that it lets us rob our joy of serving, that's where we get into trouble. And the Lord says to Martha, 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 you are distracted and worried about many things. There is only one thing that you need to be aware of. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. In the midst of her serving, Martha was so busy that her busyness got the best of her. Her anxiety and her worried and her distracted state of mind and heart robbed her of being aware of the very presence of God in front of her. And her, Mary, her sister Mary sat and listened to the Lord. Have you ever been in that situation when you go and visit a friend or even a, a family member and they're just so distracted by your presence that they're up and down and what can I get you? Can I get you anything else? And all you want is their time. All you want is their presence of mind and heart. That's all you're looking for. And that's the situation that we have with Martha. Martha in her busyness. Martha failed to see what her sister Mary saw. Martha needed the very thing that Mary had. And as Jesus told her, Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken away from her. It's in our own hectic state at times, whether of heart or mind, that we need to just stop and spend time with the Lord, spend time in his presence, seek his peace by spending time with him in his word. When we look at this particular section of Luke's gospel, we're in uh, chapter 10. And last week, if you recall, we had a lawyer who asked Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? And Jesus says to him, what does, what does the law say? And the lawyer says that you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus goes on to tell him about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Last week, we heard, how do we inherit eternal life? How do we inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells us that by loving God, by loving our neighbor, we love God. Right? By loving our neighbor. Love God by loving our neighbor. And this week, we hear that we love God by loving God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, spending time with his word in reflection and in prayer. So Jesus says, how do we, the lawyer says, how do we inherit eternal life? We inherit eternal life by loving God and loving neighbor. It is a both and. It's not an either or. Jesus asks us to love God and love neighbor, and whereby we inherit eternal life. Last week we saw, how do we inherit eternal life? The better part last week was to love neighbor. The good Samaritan came upon a man who was dying, beaten and robbed, and he took care of him. He loved God by loving his neighbor. And this week, we hear about Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus, who took time to listen to his word, to spend time in his presence. This week, the better part was to take time to listen to God's word, to spend time with him, to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, and all our mind. Amen?